I was raised by three mothers. I know this probably paints a picture of a skinny niece mothered by three women on a sofa, or an image of a naive, two-spoiled girl that never toughened up by the men in her life. But I was not raised by the love they had for me. I was raised by the love they had for each other, and instead of triple the care, you get an exponential amount of all our hearts multiplied by each other, all packed in a single family household that even closed doors couldn't keep from spilling out. My grandmother has a red halo around eyes that are blue, the hot flaming color of passion, but also the color of sacrifice. She couldn't not have a heated conversation, because everything about her was heated. Her love, her words, her actions, even her willingness to live. The woman is on fire. And before I know it, there is no storm, no snow capable of making me feel cold when I am in her hands. Because when I am in her hands, I am in good hands. I am in the hands that showed selfishness how to be ashamed, that taught problems how to not complain, that trained gratitude and respect and generosity and intelligence and care how to keep a family together. My grandmother thought that food cured everything. She saw pillness in my face no one else saw. She would tell me I needed more fat in my body, more pink in my cheeks, but I would know that she saw through me. And years of living have taught her better than to think she could protect me from inevitable heartbreak. But her heart was still too swollen with the love she had for me that she still had to cook. So you see, food became in our family the metaphor of misdirection. My mother is made for glitter and sparkles. And you have assumed right. That would also mean she hit the weight of the years really well, tucked it under a smile and some folds around her green eyes. And in her strength, she is strong, and in her weakness, she is a fighter, and in her glitter, unlike me, she's the furthest from pathetic. My mother is also loud, the perfect addition to make it even harder for her to go unnoticed. Her voice, her laughter, her teasing, and even her stare was one of the loudest stares, because it was a stare desperate to be harsh enough for the world, but overruled with her ingenuity. How scary it was for me to let you see us together, because when you look at her face, I'm not that unknown girl with no background. You get to see my eyes in her eyes, my smile in her smile, my spirit in her spirit, and suddenly I'm exposed. My aunt, she was my childhood storyteller. When the world was too big for my body, she brought the world to me compressed in capsules. When she talked, the gestures of her hands would dim the light, the beating of her heart would set the rhythm, the clearing of her throat would amplify the sounds, and the gleaming of her brown eyes would project the images. Images she described, so vivid and mesmerizing, left me feeling myself shrink into just a corner of them, like a big bang, with small dreams that would soon explode into images of my own, and the older we both got, the more our images reconciled. The more she embraced my explosion with welcoming arms as, she, as if she had waited for it her whole life. And she stood in the middle of it, unharmed, making her case of how both our minds were connected to the same thread. We were different channels on the same satellite. And as we both became proud of each other, we automatically became proud of ourselves. And now that we have grown even more, I contemplate whether that was her plan all along to hold, her, to hold herself up a mirror of myself implicitly before my eyes, hoping that one day I would know its worth. So, you see, I was raised by three mothers, which meant that every action was reported three times, every <laughs> I dare you was I triple dare you, every outing was like, the medic, I won't be late, I'm fine, the medic, I won't be late, I'm fine, the medic, I won't be late, I'm fine, which meant that every visit to the doctor resembled a family road trip which meant that agreeing on something was impossible and that taking a vote was even harder than electing a president. <laughs> but nevertheless, and after all, I was part of an equation of exponential love. Love so strong and women so strong, and the strength of these women was not by how they shaped me, rather by how they raised me to shape myself. <laughs>